Energy Code. So we have had discussion uh, and have a new draft in council uh, with highlights. So if you could walk us through the new draft one. Sure, LJ Kowski, Office of Legislative Council. So we're looking at draft 1.1, strangle amendments to S253. The only changes from the underlying bill are highlighted in yellow. Um, so first, there's this finding section. Um, it is uh, intact, except for on page one, line nine, according to the 2020 state of Vermont greenhouse gas emissions inventory update and forecast, the prior version read, according to the most recent. Um, say it was, what one are we talking about actually? Because it is private to people how um, it lags behind current day. Thank you. The rest of these signings are intact. <laughs> the sign is building codes rather than building. We didn't get there yet. So no. Um, page two. So section two is establishing the Energy Code Compliance Working Group. There is additions to the makeup of this working group. So on page two, the working group shall have 15 members with applicable expertise to include program design and implementation, building code administration enforcement, and Vermont's construction industry. And on page, uh, so on page three, just to remind you, there will be one senator, one member from the House, and then these other <laughs> members, to which two people have been added, a representative from the Office of Professional Regulation, and a representative from the Vermont Association of Realtors. Mr. Chen. Yes. Um, thank you, Council. Just to be clear, if someone from the public wanted to participate in these meetings, they don't have to be on the committee. It's still open. You can come and give information. Yeah, this body will have to comply with the open meeting law, which does require at least one opportunity for the public to particularly participate, um, or they can also choose to allow them to weigh in on any time during the meeting. So yes, they have to be open to the public, accessible, and have at least one opportunity for them to publicly speak. Body. Okay, so if you were someone who's really interested in this topic, you could attend, you could have your voice heard, even if you're not necessarily on the committee. Okay, thanks. I'm guessing it will operate the way we did last summer and fall, which was that we have different members of the public uh, and different trades and professions uh, dip in and out, but we were on a part of the conversation that was a particular interest to them. And although formally we were sometimes you know, we had a, a public comment period. There were other times where it became a discussion and included and there's the public just chipping in to the conversation along the way. Cool. Thank you. Um, and uh, by way of explanation, uh, Mr. Tucker, who's here, uh, who often attended our meetings, uh, asked uh, that realtors be officially included, which we thought was a good idea because we're changing you know, the world of real estate. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously we had Ms. Hibbert in yesterday. I saw her in the hallway and she thought, you know, on second thought, given all the conversation and the depth of their involvement, they should, they should form yeah. a uh, Okay, so that's the the next changes are on page four. So the powers and duties of the working group, the working group shall, um, and so just to take a step back, this language up until this point has been nearly identical to that working group from last summer. It's nearly identical. This language on page four um, changes slightly the tasks they'll be working on, although they do really relate to the tasks that had been worked on. So they shall recommend strategies to increase awareness of and compliance with the RVs and the CVs. And that was the overall sort of goal with last year's working group as well. Develop plans and recommendations for the transition to a comprehensive program for the RVs and CVs at the Division of Fire Safety. And consider whether or not the state should adopt a statewide building code. So I'd like to propose one, and we some pushback on the notion that we 
Although it was clear consensus in the group, like we did a raise their hands if you think ultimately the division fire and safety mm -hmm. is the logical home for all this work, given all their pre existing work regulating trades and professions in construction. Um, and it was 18 and 20. So, uh, you know, uh, we heard from Mr. DeRocher yesterday. Who, and in the summer, as well as here yesterday, said we don't have the capacity to do that. We fully recognize that. And so this doesn't mean, oh, uh, we're blindly doing something. It's like, but if that's uh, I think the logical endpoint, we should at least think about how we could get there. So in order to indicate um, maybe really a little heartburn, I would like to suppose and said it and say, develop plans and recommendations for a potential transition to, because we're not actually declaring it as the home. It's still, it's always been, if we're going there, how would we do it? And so part of the decision-making me, if you were to say, should we or shouldn't we, you ought to think about the implications. This says, think about the implications and, and be ready to make that decision Maybe it takes another year or two to make a decision, but at least let's put ourselves in a better position to be ready. Anyway. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I appreciate that change, and I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, one of the concerns that we actually heard at a realtor's breakfast or lunch it was lunch. It was lunch. It was <laughs> mid afternoon. Uh, it was interesting. This was the topic of conversation: was how do we address some of the shortages that the fire safety folks have when it comes to being able to do their work. So if this addresses some of that, like how, how would they do it knowing that they're already at a serious staffing capacity max, um, I would be supportive. So thank you for that. Sure. Everyone? I mean, Senator Watson. That's okay. No worries. Um, thank you. I I also agree. I think that's a fair I was worried that you were going to say that we just take yeah, the fire safety out um, mm -hmm. and go back to the question of like who should do this. But I'm glad I'm glad that we're still keeping them in there as the as the potential um, uh, home of this. And I know one of the concerns that that we that has been raised is is the resources. And so I wonder if if mm -hmm. it would be amenable to say develop plans and recommendations. Potential transition to comprehensive plan, blah, 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 including potential uh, funding sources. Sure. I mean, we've always said we're not asking someone to just do more with the current budget. And I, I say that because I think they probably would need more support to, yeah. to do that. And we should, and just so that they know that we're thinking about that. Yeah. And I think that's what they have. You just said it's we're going to raise later. There you go. <laughs> right. Well, for instance, they, they run on permit fees right now, but, you know, and there's a question about are those fees adequate to support all the work they have? Who um, is? Um, the who? The vision of fire and safety. Fire safety. Mr. DeRocher. Under their current statute. Under their current statute and funding team. I do not. Anyway, I think they receive very little general fund support. It's mostly fee based. So, they not fires. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Good idea. It's part of our thinking. Let's make it explicit. Yes, yes. I, it would be a bummer for something to come back without. Yeah, and we have yeah. to um, right. come up with something. It would be just wishful thinking. Yeah. Uh, right. Great. So, you said, Mr. Chair, if we should decide to go there. Yes. Yeah, so, and I just, mm -hmm. someone has to be the architect of. There, that's what we're after. Yeah, um, you know the, the simple, troubling truth is we have a sort of a, a piecemeal fractured program. Not well. We get along with your hard work. Job. Yeah. Venn diagram. All the other states are circles inside of circles, and we have different things in orbit. Be nice to, to go to a coherent structure for managing, especially again. Sorry to be repetitious. It's the biggest purchase most people ever make in their lifetime. Maybe we never. 
It's their uh, way of building wealth. They need to be healthy in that space. And then they should have the assurance that they're living in something well constructed well. And for the builders that built property, it levels the playing field significantly. Well, people not building the code, they need to understand the price for builders who actually do follow code. So there's a business from the uh, playing field. Is there any other I think that takes to D. D. <laughs> so, uh, assistance. The working group shall have the administrative, technical, and legal assistance of the Department of Public Service. An excellent choice, I think. <laughs> um, and they hosted the this working group this past summer and fall. <clears throat> Not an old idea, but these are the Yeah, it's like, well, well I, so I, you know, my favorite. The prior version had a different entity. And did you say part of them all? No, the prior entity was me. Um, oh. The department had a lot more uh, expertise here. Um, they still have the ability to hire a third party consultant, um, which may be funded by an appropriation or any grant funding. So there's that. And there is, uh, people might remember, Mr. Bainey was in here to help. If this all thing off, and they have, um, uh, I don't know exactly whom the grant went, but a, um, a DOE grant to work exactly in this topic oh. is come to the state, if not here, makes like $1.1 million. So it's not, this it's is not an empty offer. to say you could engage with us. This is probably the energy grant. Nice. Okay. Next, uh, the report. So, honored for January 15, 2025, and annually until 2030. <laughs> 2030, the working group shall submit a written report to the Senate Committee on Health Resources and Energy and the House Committee on Environment and Energy with its findings and recommendations for legislative action. So, I do want to add here. So, um, put it, they, you put a specific end date here, 2030. So, this is. Um, a five year study committee, um, five and a half year. Um, I think for clarity and grammar, we should also, you should also add a statement that says the group shall cease to exist on. Um, and Ledge Council is trying to sort of standardize some of the formatting of working groups. So I, um, I think it would probably be in the next subsection, but just to be clear that this isn't a one time. A right, one summer working group, it's a five year one. Okay, sure. If you could add that, yeah, that would be better to be more clear, right? Because then otherwise, it's like, oh, they just stop working on reports and they just keep existing, or yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, and the 2030 date was Ms. Wanderson, please don't make this a committee in perpetuity. So, um, and given the, the Rough sense that we're talking about something like a five to seven year thing. Um, and so next for the meetings, the Department of Public Service shall call the first meeting on a report July 1, 2024. And so that is it for changes in the working group. Uh, sections three and four do not have any changes to them. The section three is amending the RVs. Uh, as you will recall from, I think, a walkthrough at some point, so that they're, um, the commissioner may direct the timely and appropriate revision of the RVs after the issuance of the update. And then the same language is used in the CVs, which does currently require that they've been adopted every three years, the updates. And so those aren't uh, changing at all. So, uh, Mr. Chair, just yes, sir. what are our RVs and CVs? What are the words? It's a residential building energy standard, commercial building energy standard. Thank you. Okay. All right. So then uh, sections 
five and six, however, are entirely new to this bill. Um, the language in five and six actually came out in H792. I think it's that, I believe it's that number. Yes, it is the House version of the bill that was drafted to adopt all of the recommendations from the working group. Um, so we borrowed, so the language from that bill has been borrowed here. Right. I'll read through it. So section five, residential building contractor registry website updates. So as part of its application to register with the residential building contractor registry administered by the Vermont Secretary of State, the Office of Professional Regulation shall require that a registrant designate the geographic areas the registrant serves on to page eight, designate the trade services that the registrant offers from the list of trade services compiled by the office, and acknowledge that compliance with the residential building energy standards, the RBs, and the commercial building energy standards, the CDs, is required. On or for uh, January 1, 2025, the Office of Professional Regulation shall update the website for the Residential Building Contractor Registry administered by the Vermont Secretary of State to regularize the usage of the term residential contractor or another term selected by the office across the website to replace usages of substantially similar terms such as builder, contractor, or residential building contractor. Publish a registrant's designation under subdivision one and two. So what geographic areas they work in, and then what um, trade services they offer in the registration's listing on the website. Implement a search feature to enable consumers to filter registrants by trade services provided, geographic areas served, voluntary, voluntary certification, or any other criteria the office deems appropriate, and add a clear and conspicuous notice that a residential contractor is required by law to comply with the state building energy standards. To get a little more user friendly, you can search by what you're looking for, a roofer that it serves Washington County, and they have a certification of one such a thing exists. Oh Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am very thrilled to see this part of the bill. Um, Rep Scott has, uh, yeah, he's done, he's he's my go-to guy on this stuff. Yeah. Um, sorry, Rep Campbell. Um, but I wanted to just ask one quick question, which is, this doesn't disallow or make any changes to like the Efficiency Vermont Energy. They like, they have a list of contractors. Would that be something? There's no. I just want to check. There's no concern, or it it wouldn't that list. Um. So. This language is not making any changes to that program. <clears throat> I I don't know offhand if any of those, if the people who work under that program, currently register are required to register. I don't I don't know. Um, and this is a session law provision, really just dealing with the application form and then the website that OPR has to administer. So, okay. So if you were someone, it's not necessarily to be used as client contract. This isn't like an Angie's list type situation, but you could learn information about a contractor. And if they're if they're meeting there. Um, I guess I don't I don't totally know what Angie's list is. Oh, so I guess I'll just say yes, OPR is going to have this website, and this will this is putting a little more parameters around it that they're gonna they have to have a searchable function, and they will have already asked when someone registers. Where do they serve and what types of services do they provide so that that can be added and then we can filter by that. So I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know oh. much more than that. So, and I don't actually but work it's on, missing. I don't actually work on the actual law that established the contractor registry. So if you have like specific questions on that, we need to phone a friend, but uh, it seems like, but I, I really like this as it's written. I don't have any recommended changes. I think, if anything, it'll be a support to Vermonters who are trying to find a contractor. Um, but obviously, there's many other tools, including if you have an efficiency, an, an EEN contractor 
Um, and can use that as well. So I think, you know, because this is the goal of the registry is to have a single comprehensive database yeah. for everyone who has an obligation, namely someone who has had a, con a contract for $10,000 or more in any given calendar year. Uh, they'll be in this bigger pool, but right. So efficiency Vermont has that great energy yeah. efficiency, energy excellence network. You got it. And you can find builders who are super duper weather riders and all the rest there. But it, you know, and you, it's you, the the great thing about what we're finally getting to here is there's been no way to communicate with this community yes. before because yes, there was no way to know who people were. I mean, my dad even did get access to some federal funds, and he's like, well, no one reached out to me. It's like, yeah, you're not on anything. How would they know? So this is a great support for the contractors, too. Thank you. All right. And Watson, did we check all the boxes? Well, I was just going through that. Um, and we've got, because I, I had my notes to include you know, four, eight through six. Or for a a four devices, um, and we definitely have a four. Um, we definitely have a five. Um, I'm sorry, we, maybe we have not. Oh, we haven't talked we, through. We're coming. Yeah, we haven't talked through section six. Yeah, yeah. but a but that's a five. Um, and then. The develop a certification for contractors trained in the energy codes. I'm thinking about like where, because I don't see that in here. And so I'm wondering where that might most appropriately fit if it does. And um, I am wondering, well, maybe I'll pause there. <laughs> see if you have thoughts on A6, which is about developing certification designation for contractors. So uh, rather than ask them with it, <clears throat> because there was this ongoing discovery about all the certifications that already live at Division of Fire Safety. Um, and then when I talked to Ms. Hibbert after the many to face down some of this stuff, she said, well, they could start with us, but they might transition over. Um, and then they also released the two Lawrence and said that by the end of this year, they're hoping to start coming up with those of suitable certifications. So rather than be prescriptive, mm -hmm. given that they're genuinely interested in the on it, I thought if we prescribe something, we might misprescribe, but and they're already linked to it. So, so it's silent about certification that way, in that way. And if but other than it lists that um, research feature that would include voluntary certification and any other criteria that well, seems appropriate, so they could get to it. But they, I am wondering if it makes sense. I'm happy to, because I'm happy to go with that if we want to just be silent about it. But I could also picture adding under um, on page four. Uh, where we've got the basically the, power, the powers and the powers and duties yeah. of the group. So I don't think it makes sense to add it necessarily to two because it might not be the division of fire safety. Yeah. But if if it was a number four, that was something like come up with a plan for um, consider whether or not the state should adopt. Certifications. That's another thing. Yes, and and who and might be responsible for doing that? Okay. Which is not even to say like and go do it, but like determine who's going to do it. Sure. Okay, uh, Mr. Tucker. Uh, good morning, uh, Peter Tucker with the Vermont Association of Realtors. I, you know, I just wonder, Senator Watson, if number one, you know, recommend strategies to increase awareness and compliance with RVs and CDs. You know, it is open enough to include those certifications in that, you know, kind of in that work groups, what we'd be looking at. So would you recommend not calling it out specifically? I think so. And let the work group do some do its work. I mean, that certainly would be part of that. But if you wanted to put it 
somewhere, I think maybe right, you know, adding to that sentence. I think to, to line to number one there. That's correct. Number yeah. One. I can see that. And um, I mean, including the potential for a certification around. I think that that, right. that was our opinion was that yeah. it, it would be, you know, when we're trying to increase awareness and compliance, this the certification for, you know, RVs um, would be part of that. Right. I guess uh, my um, oh. my goal in yeah. in saying all of this is that I don't like this. This is come to us as a recommendation, right? That it's a six develop certification, right? And so I'm I'm trying to think of like how are we making progress? And I don't <clears throat> necessarily want the report next time to come back and say develop a certification designation for contractors. Do you know what I mean? And so like, how how are we actually gonna move the ball forward on that particular point? If that is in fact the recommendation of the group, and I want to acknowledge that our compatriot over there also. Sure, so having comments, let me before going on this bit, thank you. Uh, how about uh, uh, in number one, which we recommend strategies increase awareness of and compliance with the RV and CVs, adding the phrase, including the use of appropriate certifications. Appropriate certification. Um, Don't feel like it works for everyone. Okay. Do we need some additional adjectives there? Because, like, I I don't totally know what kind of certifications you're talking about. Um, I mean, like you're certifying the contractors, or if there were, it's things like if you were certified for green building, or I don't know, well, uh, 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 HVAC, gold level service, whatever, and you know, like some meaningful certification that suggests you know how. To do that particular task as well. Well, and the language in the recommendation is certification designation for contractors trained on the energy codes. Okay. So I think that there might be different <laughs> ways that that can look um, or qualifications, you know, official titles <laughs> that might go along with that. But do you mind if I add that? Yeah, I'm good. <clears throat> Oh, so so uh, ready kilowatt, old medallion homes um, with ready kilowatt on the old medallion. I'm fine with that. I'm worried that um, that language would allow the potential for the next report to just say again, develop the certification. So I, um, I, I think if the committee understands that, like, we want more specifics, like, tell us who's doing it or how, yeah, how, oh, like, what office is going to be receiving those uh, or, like, you know, storing that information or <clears throat> just any more specifics um, would be, I don't, I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> As it is, as, as we yeah. talked about it now, it's fine as yeah. long as people understand that. Yeah, you don't want to just hear certifications would be a good idea. Right, exactly. <laughs> like what? <more. laughs> I think it does say recommend um, strategies. strategies you know, or. Sure, okay, that's fair. Um, I could, if, if strategy is too uh, airy. <laughs> um, or plans, programs, or programs, yeah. strategies, yeah. and pro and programs to increase awareness, all the way through, and that including the use of appropriate certification. That would be great. I okay. Like that. So we're a little more concrete. Let's fit some things. We're away. We keep oh. using building terms. Yeah. And certification concrete. It's like it's hard to now use water terms when you do the what the top of mind. Uh, Sandra Bitsum, architect from Montpelier. Um, thank you for letting me uh, just mention one thing. The, the 
the one reason why this is urgent for um, our community is that figuring out the authority that determines competence for contractors is essential for the DOE grid. Okay. And they are on a clock that's ticking. So that is why we got kind of pushy, yeah. I would say. Because um, there is current statute right now in 26 VSA 106 um, giving OPR authority to recognize and approve certifications, particularly from third parties. Um, there's no mechanism now to determine competence. So if certifications are one thing, and we talk about mail-in certifications where you get this paper, but actually taking a problem apart after it's found in the building, having the ability to encourage the person to get more education. Uh, that that part's the speaking part. And what Secretary Deputy was Secretary was talking about temporary solution versus there's enough in the statute to work on a temporary solution. And the question is, do we look to the long-term solution sooner or later? Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. So, um, Council, do you want to read how you're going to rewrite line one, two, or three, two, four? Sure. So the working group shall recommend strategies and programs to increase awareness of and compliance with the RVs and CVs, including the use of appropriate certifications for contractors trained on the energy code. In the energy code, on the energy code, um, the language you use is on, on, but. Oh, um, open uh, editorial services role. Probably looking for it. And then two is develop plans and recommendations for a potential transition to a comprehensive program for the RVs and CVs at the Division of Fire Safety, including potential funding sources. Um, and then further on, you're adding a, a new paragraph about terminating the yeah. group. Okay. Um, we can really see if there's anything else we've asked for. So, my question. Not, but well, I haven't read page nine yet. Oh, thank you. Right. Yes. We were talking about that, so yeah, we didn't actually mm -hmm. do it. Right, it's very short. So, section six um, does come from one of the recommendations. Um, so, residential building contractor contract templates. The Office of Professional Regulation shall update any contract template that the office furnishes for residential building contracting to provide that the residential contractor is required to comply with the residential building energy standards, RVs, and the CVs. Okay. Okay. Any questions on any of the text? Now you know what I'm going to ask you. How many minutes from now would you like us to read? Mm -hmm. We have a clean vote, uh, it's a bill to review and vote. Ten. Ten. Okay. <laughs> sure. I, 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 if you want a clean copy, it takes twenty. Oh, a couple more minutes to that. All right. So maybe we see you at ten. And should we talk about five after ten? Should we talk about today? Yeah. 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 We're gonna get into the line. Yeah, do it. It's still early. Yeah, it's so early. It's not even the bell isn't even ringing. No ringing. So not right. Mark. We oh, wait, wait, so, oh, right. uh, we're not on. Yeah, uh, we are pausing till 11.05. Give me one minute here. Please, 